Minorman. That's what we call wild rice in Nishnaba. It's been a part of our culture for thousands of years. Shmong Lake, Buckhorn Lake, and Pigeon Lake are all on the same level in the Trent Canal system. And at one time it was full of wild rice. Since 1950, it's been on a decline. And so for the last 35 years, I've been trying to rehabilitate this area and other areas around our reserve. When we got a, a wild rice bed established, we go out in a canoe, the person in the front of the canoe paddles, the person in the back has two sticks, and you gotta paddle carefully and carefully bend the plants over top the canoe, tap the top of the plant, and the ripe seeds will fall off into the canoe. So you do that all day. Good canoers and gatherers can get maybe 100 pounds a day. Uh, they bring it home to shore, and then I roast it. When we're roasting it, we try to remove about 90% of the water. The chaff, we try to get it to the onion skin texture so that when we dance on it, that chaff will break off the, the rice seeds real easy. So when we dance on it, we'll put about 25 pounds in the kettle. We'll uh, put our moxins on and we try to rub the seeds between our feet and the, and the kettle. We don't try to just jump on it or try to break it. We rub it, and move it around and pass it back and forth to each foot. And once it's been danced on, we take a blanket or a birch bark tray and we put some of the danced on seeds because the chaff is still mixed up in it and we flip it up in the wind. We call this winnowing and the wind will blow away the chaff and the dust and the heavier seeds fall back down into the tray or the blanket. Once it's been winnowed, it's ready to cook. A lot of people think wild rice is just a weed. They don't know that we eat it for food and that it's been a part of our culture for thousands of years. <laughs>